Lecture 1.16 is about vapor pressure, the differences between liquids in terms of their vapor pressure, and all of the components that lead up to these differences. So now we're spending some time with liquids, okay, as we've been looking uh, at the last couple of days, we've been looking at the differences in phase changes between solids to liquid and those phase changes between liquid and solid in terms of heat effusion, heat of vaporization, and all the problems associated. Now we're going to look specifically at liquids and things that make liquids differ from each other. And we're going to look exclusively at table H to see those differences. But before we get to table H, there's some basic underlying understandings we have to have. And what is evaporation? Well, I taught you earlier something called uh, distribution, uh, Boltzmann distribution graphs, and I'm going to try to draw one here. And we see that when we have a cold liquid, we see the distribution of number of molecules. It's the number of molecules here. And this would be the actual temperature range or the speed. Okay, and we know that when the temperature increases, we know that this curve or this area stays constant. This area is the number of particles at these different speeds. Some are at this average, some are below and above. Now if we increase the temperature, we know that this curve flattens out. So this top curve could have been at, let's say, 50 degrees Celsius. Now that maybe this one is now 80 degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to draw another line here with another, uh, let's say, green line. and um, Let's make the line right here, not a great line. Now this line represents the speed at which molecules can evaporate. And I don't want you to get lost in the idea that only at 100 degrees Celsius does liquid molecules actually evaporate. They can evaporate in almost any temperature. And evaporation is when molecules have enough energy to escape the liquid phase and go directly into the gas phase. So even at these distribution graphs here, at 50 degrees Celsius, this line represents the speed. Notice at 50 degrees Celsius, there's some molecules that have enough energy to escape. So even way below 100, we know that there is some evaporation going on. And you know this for a fact that on a cold day, uh, puddles outside in the um, street definitely do evaporate. Now on a warm day, they evaporate faster, but neither of those two temperatures, a warm day or a cold day, are you at the boiling point of water. So boiling is maximum evaporation. So even on cold days or even colder temperatures, 50 degrees Celsius is still pretty warm, obviously, but even at colder temperatures, there's still enough molecules to evaporate. Now at warmer temperatures, like 80 degrees Celsius, there's even more molecules that have enough speed or energy to overcome their own attractions. And those attractions we called intermolecular attractions. So intermolecular molecular attractions. These are attractions between okay, molecules. These are not bonds. So if I've got a water molecule, okay, and this is a bent molecule, we'll talk about why. Okay, so this is a water molecule. It will attract another water molecule by attractive forces. And these are intermolecular attractions, oops, all right, are what keeps the liquid together. Okay, so we call them intermolecular attractions. We usually, usually use dots to show them. So water molecules will attract other water molecules by these attractions. Now you learned about these last year as H bonding. They're not really bonds, they're attractions. And they become very significant. How liquid molecules attract one another affect, affect I'm sorry, how well they evaporate. So uh, we'll talk about that soon enough. So we're talking about attractions between molecules, not bonds between atoms. And there's different types, and we'll learn about those later in the year. But right now, you should know that at warmer temperatures, okay, keeping this area under the curve the same, and I know it's not drawing the scale, more molecules at higher temperatures have enough energy to escape each other and exit the container and become a gas. Okay, so that's what we talk about vapor pressure. Now we're introducing another term, vapor pressure. Now pressure is a force over an area. And we're going to talk more specifically about this in another lecture when we get into gas laws. But we're talking about forces, and the force that we're talking about over an area is the force due to collisions. 
and collisions occur when molecules move translationally towards some object and hit it. Now we talked about three motions of molecules. We talked about vibrational energy, which is really what a, a thermometer measures. Then we have translational motion, which is what pressure or, or barometer measures the, the movement from point A to point B, and of course rotational. So the pressure that we're talking about is a force due to collisions by the translational movement of molecules from point A to point B and when they collide with an object over an area and that's what pressure is and we'll talk more about those units okay right now we're just going to use kilopascal as a unit but I'll define those units in a later chapter any case so what is vapor pressure vapor pressure is vapor means gas and this is the pressure of force so this is basically the pressure due to liquid molecules okay escaping their gas phase so if this was a molecule and this was a molecule and this was a molecule okay and we would have like let's say a, a hand okay okay my ugly hand right above that and if these molecules have enough energy to overcome their intermolecular attractions between the molecules they'll escape and evaporate and there would be a force upward on my hand. In fact, you know this to be true because when you try to heat or boil a pot of water, you notice the top of a pan actually rattles. That rattling of the top of the pan or the pot where you have boiling water is due to the pressure or the force of liquid molecules hitting the top of that pan. Okay, they used to have pressure cookers years ago where they closed it off and sealed it and they cooked under high pressure and we'll talk about that. So vapor pressure is the force due to molecules escaping, or in case here, evaporating. Okay, now, if you evaporate at a higher rate, you have a higher force. If you evaporate in a slower rate, you have a lower force. Okay, so some liquids differ how they do that. So before we continue, I want to show you a couple of different animations that kind of go over what I just talked about. All right, the first point I wanted to make, make sure we understand, is that higher temperatures, there's going to be more evaporation, therefore more force, therefore a higher vapor pressure. So higher the temperature equals higher the vapor pressure because of this Boltzmann curve. At higher temperatures, more molecules have enough energy to overcome the attractive forces between molecules. Okay, as you lower the temperature, less molecules have enough energy okay to overcome these attractions and they evaporate less okay but let's take, take a little break from this and look at some uh, evaporation uh, movies okay so we're looking at some water molecules they're moving and rotating and we see the top edge if you look carefully we see some water molecules escaping the ones that are leaving are creating a pressure upward and there's your vapor pressure now if you notice some are coming back that's condensation going on so we're showing equilibrium here but the pressure is when liquids can overcome their attractive forces and take off from the surface of the liquid and that force of pressure going upward creates what we call vapor pressure and the higher the temperature the faster the rate because you have more molecules who can overcome more of their attractions and become a gas going upward and that essentially is why temperature goes up vapor pressure goes up okay here's another example molecules of a liquid have a range of kinetic energies some have enough energy to overcome intermolecular forces. If these high energy molecules are at the surface of the liquid, they can escape into the gas phase. This is an endothermic process. And of course, this process, okay, creates pressure upward. And that escaping upward, of course, is your vapor pressure. Higher the temperature, the more that you have. Okay. Now, Looking at this um, graph or this table H that I have here, which is in your reference table, okay, there are some differences between the four liquids shown here. So we have propanone, which by the way is acetone or nail polish remover is one thing, ethanol, which is the alcohol in beer, wine, and liquor, water, of course, and ethanoic acid, another fancy word for vinegar, okay, or if you're above the train tracks, vinegar. Any case, these four liquids evaporate at different rates. So look at the vapor pressure measured in kilopascals. That's going to be our unit. Okay, there's other units, Tor, we'll talk about them. Now, notice how these lines increase as temperature increases. Notice propanone, okay, has a faster rate of increase of vapor pressure, which is really what? 
a faster rate of evaporation. These four liquids evaporate at different rates. All liquids have unique rates of evaporation, but we're going to say all liquids have different vapor pressures at different temperature. If I was to draw a straight line, okay, and that's going to be challenging, but I'll try. At uh, 45 degrees Celsius, okay, you can clearly see that propanone has the highest vapor pressure and ethanoic acid has the lowest. Why? What about propanone? What, what, what about it that makes it evaporate at a much faster rate? And what can we say about ethanoic acid? Well, the answer, my friend, okay, is in the strength of the intermolecular attractions. How strong are these attractions between one molecule to another? If they're very strong, okay, then doesn't it make sense they're going to resist evaporation? And they're going to need a higher or more energy, higher temperature, thus more energy to separate. Things with weak attractions, I'll just go one or two dots, don't need a lot of energy. So looking at these differences between propanone, who evaporates very easily at a high rate, at, evaporates, creates a high vapor pressure, okay, at a lower, at the same temperature, the other four liquids, what can you say about its intermolecular attractions? Are they weaker or are they stronger? Well, if they evaporate easier, then you can say that their um, intermolecular attractions are weaker. That's the reason why that they're able to escape so easily from each other and create a high rate of evaporation, thus a high vapor pressure. Ethanoic acid, it's resisting evaporation or resisting uh, boiling, if you want to think of it that way, because it has the strongest attractive forces. Therefore, it needs a higher temperature. Okay, so the rate of evaporation, or thus vapor pressure, is dependent upon the strength of those attractions. And we'll talk about those in another course, but right now we're just going to call them inter, another chapter, intermolecular attractions. Okay, party people. Something else to consider. This dotted line represents standard pressure. Pressure at sea level. We talked about this because Andy Celsius, if you remember, adjusted his two fixed point on his thermometer based on the boiling point and freezing point of water. Well, guess what? This is the boiling point. Boiling point is maximum evaporation. And let me explain what I'm talking about here. Water boils, okay, if you notice, at 100 degrees Celsius. Notice its vapor pressure okay, is 101.3. I know I kind of wrote over that. So when the vapor pressure is 101.3, okay, that is when we have boiling, when the temperature is 100. Now, what is boiling? So the temperature is 100, and if the pressure is 101.3, we have boiling. Well, what does that really mean? Well, if I draw another diagram over here, and I have some liquid molecules, we know, we already talked about that every temperature there is some evaporation, okay? Now we also know, and this may not be something you know, but there's also competing pressure going downward. It wasn't shown in the other movies, but we have gas molecules already in the air colliding with the surface, pushing down. So we have pressure pushing down, and we also have pressure pushing up. Boiling is called maximum evaporation is when the pressure pushing up is equal to the pressure pushing down. So right now, with all my arrows pushing down, this pressure is keeping this liquid from evaporating. If you were to pour this liquid in a vacuum, which I'm going to show you in class tomorrow, I can make this water boil at a low temperature. Well, how? If I lower the atmospheric pressure, let's pretend I lower it down to 50 or 50, water will boil now at 83. I can make water boil at 50 if I lower the pressure. If I lower the pressure all the way down, I can almost make it boil at zero. As long as the atmospheric pressure equals the what? The, the, um, the pressure pushing up, we have boiling. It's maximum evaporation. The vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. Now, right now, we produce only high enough vapor pressure at 100 degrees Celsius 
to produce the same pressure of the atmosphere. Notice, when does propanone boil? It boils when its vapor pressure curve hits 101.3 and that temperature is around 56. Notice its boiling point is lower. Why? Because it has weaker attractive forces. It needs lower amount of heat to separate maximally. Ethanol boils at what temperature? It boils at 80 about but only when the pressure is 101.3. What if I increase the pressure above the liquid? Would it make sense I'm going to need more vapor pressure upward to balance that off? Yes, and I do so under a higher temperature. So we can make water boil at water at a higher temperature. In fact, I can make water boil at 125 degrees. All right, so we can't do that in this graph, but let's go right here. I can make water boil let's say 110, 105, 110, 115. Okay, so this is 115. So I can make the water boil at 115 degrees Celsius, but what would be the pressure? Okay, the pressure would have to be, this is 160, 170, 180. So if the pressure is way above atmospheric pressure, water boils at a higher temperature. So when you say boiling for a temperature, you really have to add the word normal. Normal boiling is equal to boiling at 101.3 kilopascals, which by the way is also equal to 760 Tor. Oops. Or one atmosphere pressure. There's another unit called 760 millimeters of mercury. These are all standard, these are all standard um, pressure units. MMG of mercury, one atmosphere, 760 Tor, they're using these. We'll talk about these units. But normal means, hey, the temperature at when the pressure is standard. Why do we need that? Because as Andy Celsius figured out, you can make all these liquids boil at any different temperature. So when I ask you what the boiling point of water is, you can give me any temperature and that would be right. Okay, as long as the pressure is equal to its vapor pressure. So this dotted line shows us the boiling point, but we would, so we would say, let me change the color here, this would be the normal boiling point. This is when the vapor pressure equals standard pressure. And you guys know this, okay, if you go up a mountain, okay, the pressure is less. So water boils at a lower temperature because the pressure is less. If you go to Death Valley where the pressure is more, water boils at a higher temperature. Or even on a day where it's high pressure day, the water is going to boil at a high temperature and a low pressure day. So the boiling point of water can change based on the pressure. Boiling is when the vapor pressure upward equals the atmospheric pressure. And I'm going to show you a demonstration tomorrow where I boil the water at room temperature. Okay, how do I do that? I lower this pressure. Okay, and that's the crux of what I'm talking about today. So the things that I want you to see here, and let's just clean this up a little bit, all right, is that, oops, I didn't clean anything up, is that liquids that boil at low temperatures, like propanone, they have a lower boiling point because of weaker intermolecular attractions, okay, and they have high vapor pressure. Ethanoic acid has stronger intermolecular attraction. That's why it resists evaporating. Okay, but it has a higher boiling point because it needs more energy to overcome those attractions, and it has a lower vapor pressure. That's what I'm teaching you today. I use the word normal. That means the boiling is at that pressure because boiling can occur at any point on this line called maximum evaporation. That's when the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric. We draw a dotted line here to show you that is when, or that is the value for atmospheric pressure when it's standard for normal. Okay, so the rest of this, uh, uh, fill the form out of the basics that I taught you here, and please, okay, do as much of the ditto as you can. Okay, both sides of the gargoyle, goblin vapor pressure ditto, and the goblin gas pressure ditto, okay? And you're going to need table H to answer some of the questions. See how you do. I do have a key available. Avita Zane.